أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome back to living the Quran through the living Quran a series in which we have been investigating the noble Quran and in particular in this particular discussion we've been going over chapter number fifty three سورة النجم Today, in part number three, we want to look at the topic of, Will you dispute? And when we want to look at verses number 12 through to 15. Now, before we go into the commentary, we have to understand that many times people want to argue and dispute with, you know, people around them. Whether it be that they have a valid point that they want to dispute about, and they have uh, want to, you know, counter another narrative, or sometimes we just find that people sometimes want to argue just for the sake of arguing, not because they are wanting to reach to a goal or to um, get to some you know, a valid conclusion or outcome in life. We, in this particular portion, we'll see some of the views of the disbelievers and their disputation with the noble prophet of Islam. But before we go into that commentary as authored by Sheikh Mohsin Kara'ati, let us have a listen to the Arabic of the recitation of these four verses, followed by their English translation, and they will come back and review the commentary and better understand the topic of will you dispute. God says the following in Surah Najm. <laughs> Will you dispute with him concerning what he saw? He saw him on another descent, at the lotus tree of the extremity, near which is the garden of repose. The word tumarunahu, it comes from the word mara, and it refers to argumentation accompanied with doubts and misgivings. The word nazla, refers to something being sent down at one instance. And lastly, the term Sidratul Muntaha, that this refers to a physical location near the promised paradise, which is full of the graces of the divine. And according to the traditions, no one other than the Prophet of Islam has traversed past that point. Now, it has been mentioned in a tradition that the location which is the final stage which the angels can ascend to, or is also known as the final station at which our good deeds ascend towards, is known as Sidratul Muntaha. And as such, we also read in the traditions that Sidratul Muntaha is the name of a tree. And for as many leaves that there are on this tree, there is an angel assigned to that leaf whose sole responsibility is to glorify, to engage in the act of tasbih of God. Because of the fact that there are a lot of doubts and disbelief in regards to the event of the Mi'raj, we see that one time in Surah Al-Isra, chapter 17, God proclaimed, Subhan ladhi the glory be to Him, glory be to God. By saying this, God wanted us to know that He is free from doing frivolous actions, and that the Mi'raj had a lofty goal to it, while in this chapter that we are currently reviewing, God poses the question and asks, Afatumarunahu ala ma yara? Will you dispute with him concerning what he saw? Although every human being is under the supervision of God, however, sometimes God glances towards some individuals in a special fashion. And so we read in Sota Najm, Walakad ra'ahu nazlatan ukhra, that he saw him on another descent. By saying this, God is in fact noting that on the mi'raj of his prophet, he glanced at his prophet in a unique way. Now the same thing can be seen in other verses of the Quran, such as when God says that he is with all people. So as an example, in chapter 57, Surah Al-Hadid, verse number 4, God says, وَهُوَ ma'akum," And he is with all of you. However, God's being with those who have God consciousness with taqwa is a unique type of being along with. And so as an example, in chapter 16, Surah Nahal, in verse 128, 
God says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ اتَّكَوْ Indeed, God is with those people who have God consciousness, who have taqwa. Yes, sometimes the state of being with someone and the graces of God are of a general nature, while sometimes it is of a more specific type. He, God, took his prophet into the heavens as a guest and brought him to the area known as the Sidrat al-Muntaha, the promised paradise, and gave him that special treatment. And this is something which also we can see has been mentioned in the Tafsir at Bayan. However, in other commentaries of the Qur'an, the following has been stated in regards to the understanding of these verses, that on another occasion the Prophet saw the angel Jibra'il in his original form and substance, or as stated in yet another commentary, that on another occasion the Prophet saw God with his, with his meaning the Prophet's, inner vision. Now, the reason why we have chosen to accept the statement found in Tafsir of Atyabul Bayan is that these verses of the Qur'an are elevating the greatness of the Prophet and his journey of the Mi'raj and the act of seeing Jibra'il, while keeping in mind that the status of the Prophet is much higher than that of Jibra'il. And so this would not be considered as an honor or some exaltation of the Prophet if he was to see the angel. And this also does not fit with the style of these verses. In addition, the Prophet witnessing God with the inner vision is something which was always available for the Prophet. And it did not occur just once or twice. However, the special grace of God in the event of the Mi'raj, this is something which was, which was given special attention because God brought his Prophet onto this journey into the heavens for a special reason. And therefore he glanced at his prophet with a special look, as God says, وَلَكَدْ رَآهُ نَزْلَةً أُخْرَى That he saw him on another descent. Now in the traditions we read that the prophet of God has himself mentioned that I saw Jibra'il near the Sidratul Muntaha and he said to me, the last point which God has allowed me to traverse is this point right here. And if I were to go even a step forward, my wings would be burnt. Let us conclude with a few takeaway messages from this portion of the commentary of Surah Najm. Point number one is that those who have no faith, no iman, do not have the ability to accept the spiritual revelations, mukashifat, and that which is granted to the close friends, the awliya of God. And so such people will seek to enter into disputation and cast doubts on such individuals. Point number two is that in regards to theoretical and intellectual issues which come up in life, there is always room for debates and for there to be some area of doubt. However, when it comes to experiencing things with the senses, then there is no room for disputes or misgivings. And point number three, and we conclude with this, is that one of the circumstances of propagation is that not everyone will accept what is said automatically. There will always be people who deny, have doubts, and will enter into dispute. We ask God to allow us to continue to read and reflect, understand, and implement the content of Surah Najm within our day-to-day lives. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.